How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane, and I am here to give you another Kimetsu no Yaiba Demon Slayer episode review recap. This is the Entertainment District. This is episode 7, also known as Transformation. I'm sorry with how late this is. I, oh, I did something I haven't done in a long time. I went out and, and enjoyed some games. Um, it's really refreshing to be in an establishment that requires the utmost security. I'm talking... You know, you gotta, it, 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 if you know where I am, you gotta have your cards, you gotta have your face mask, you gotta be able to prove it. And it feels nice to be able to just go out there and know that I'm safe and spend some time with some people who I haven't seen in a while. Or at least been able to hang out with, with a little in a while. So, with all that being said, I need you guys to do me a favor. We're gonna transform this channel into a 200 subscriber channel. And how are we going to do that? You're going to give me a like, you're going to give me a comment, and you're going to subscribe. Easy. Easy peasy. Um, I'm speaking so... I usually don't like doing these at late at night, but I will not miss an episode. I will not let you guys down in this episode. Oh my goodness gracious. Now, there's only... I was... If, if what I read was correct, there's only going to be 11 episodes of this series, so... It's episode seven. We got four more left. Next episode's obviously eight. So that's three more after that. And if my calculations are correct, there's two more weeks left in January. And the week after that is the first weekend of February. So this is moving at a decent pace because, whew. Now, if you remember last time, um, Nesco, she grew, she grew into the form of an upper rank demon. Which includes, you know, getting busty and everything, which a lot of people went crazy talking about, you know, you're objectifying and sexualizing characters. And look, look, I'm just, I'll say it like this. There are people in the world who have breasts. It's going to happen. Um, a character like her, who is, uh, I think she's like a year younger than... Tanjiro, she can shift her size to that of like a five-year-old or go into her normal 16, 17 year old self or go into this grown-ass woman form. Also, it's an anime. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. STFU. So, she was kicking Daki's ass. Literally kicking her ass. Just the as fast as she was chopping off them legs with the same leg, she stomped her into the ground. And <clears throat> got my notes right here. She, uh, oh, here we go. You know, she is literally stomping her. She stomps off Doki's Doc, arms. Like Nesco, you see it right here. Our sweet Nesco is smiling at basically torturing and defiling this already wretched being. And um, I love. I love that they started this with the Mugen Train art. While Tanjiro was passed out on the roof, his younger brother, one of his younger brothers, the the uh, not the baby one, but his younger brother is trying to wake him up in whatever spirit realm this is that he has this connection. It's like, you gotta get up, big brother. You know, uh, Onei-chan, big sister, she's not gonna be herself. And this is when he wakes up. And Nesuka was just torturing Daki. Like, she's be the hell out of her to where Daki's just getting pissed off and finally pushes her off and she slices off Nesco's head arms torso and Nesco's able to still grab her her cloth and her limbs because her blood I ain't seen I haven't seen this shit since the first Blade movie you guys ever remember the first Blade movie where Blade cuts Deacon Faust in half his body's floating and that blood congeals and pulls him back together that's exactly what happens with Nesco. She does this, and because her blood has splattered on Daki, her demon blood heart is that burn. Now, that burn doesn't hurt people. Daki analyzes it, says it hurts demons. Okay, your demon heart hurts demons. And it's reminding Daki of her own past. Looks like she got left behind and was getting burned, and it was sincerely burning her. And Nesco just comes up comes up in there and just kicks and punches and beats the hell out of her. Like, she's, she is at an upper-rate demon form, which is going to lead me to my uh, first interjection. It seems like 
the big brother, big sister. Seems like Tanjiro and Nesco, they have an ability that is super, super strong, but they cannot control it yet. And I'm going to get into that in a second, because obviously she's losing herself. She's becoming enraptured in the battle, and actually, uh, she ends up kicking Donkey through three three buildings and accidentally hurts a woman. So a woman is cut. This is a whole geisha district. So there's geisha. There's people getting it on. There's people spending the night with people. There are folks being intimate. And there's also just families here as well. And, you know, two women, cur uh, you know, curled up and one lady's cut. And Nesco sees her arm. And Nesco's just going to reach for us. It's, it's, she's drooling. And, of course, Tanjiro gets there at the right time. Puts, uh, puts that sheath blade that scabbard in her mouth and is like saying you gotta fight Inesco. You have to fight. You cannot give in. And he does the uh, he does the MMA straddle, you know, where you cross the legs acro across the torso because at this point Nesco is very much taller than him. And um <clears throat> as he's holding on to her, he, you know, I love the internal commentary. He says, Yeah, I can smell her blood everywhere. That means she's been hurting, she's been getting hurt. And he can tell how bad she's wounded because of all the blood that he can smell. And he's apologizing to me. He's like, I'm sorry. I won't let anybody hurt you anymore. Just go to sleep and heal yourself. Don't do this. Nesco jumps straight up. And I thought he was going to let go, but he didn't let go and burst through the roof. Now we've interrupted more people. There's another, there's another young couple over here. There's two ladies over here. And they're like, someone's come through the roof. Now, and while he is trying to hold on to her, Doki's entered. She's walking in through the shadows, and she's irritated. She's pissed. Her face is still badly burnt. She has no lips. So she's talking like this because, you know, uh, Nesco's healing factor is actually much better than Doki's. And at the same time, Nesco has burned her to the point that she cannot heal that fast. And Tanjiro... Tanjiro is I love I love how the fighters in this show think, especially at split level seconds. And then it's a thing that if you ask professional fighters, it's a thing that generally happens with some very professional people. Sometimes some people act on instinct, but sometimes people are able to think in that split second what they're gonna do. And Tanjiro's like her attack can come out at any moment. I can't hold back Nesco, protect these people, and protect myself. He doesn't know what he's going to do. And as soon as Donkey Cloth moves, our boy Tengen, already there, and is in, right in front of them, is like, so this flashy demon here is Nesco Kamoda. And everybody's like, what the hell just happened? He does the cloth is falling, and... Um, <clears throat> he looks really fucking cool. I have to say, given a character whose first introduction was like, oh, you gotta be flashy, this dude actually turns out to be pretty damn cool. So, you know what? I'm gonna bow down. It's the same thing with, with, uh, Kyo oh, damn it, my nose. With, uh, Kyojiro Rengoku. Bow down to that, too. Man, if I end up liking the dude who cries a lot, I it's, it's such a good move to introduce. You have us so enamored with Tanjiro and Nesco that when anybody goes against them, I'm instantly like, kill these people. Get them out of here. I don't even care what happens to them. Now it's I'm, I'm it's, it's a lie. I actually care about these characters. And, um... <clears throat> where am I at here? So we get this funny moment where Uzu is yelling at, at Tanjiro. He's like, what was all that grandstanding in front of the master and you're in this sorry state? And I love, I love that this can be a serious moment, but they cut in the funny yelling faces and we get to see a cute version of Enrage Nesco while he's holding her. Um, and he's like, no one ever told her to be a flashy demon. Here comes Doki saying, oh, so you're a Hashira, right? You made my job easy. Um... Mind you, she, again, she has no lips. I even has this in, in my notes. I love how he speaks to her. He's like, shut up. I am not even talking to you. And you need to get lost. <laughs> like that, first I said, damn, that's a double damn. He's like, you're not even an upper rank demon. You're not the one I'm searching for. And I'm like, 
is this really true? And she's like, what are you talking about? Her head falls clean off into her hand. And it's just like, he beheaded her in that split second. Damn. Meanwhile, Inosuke's yelling because Tengen was too fast for him and the sleeping Zenitsu to keep up. But Zenitsu got that super hearing and he is going to go ahead and run in the direction that he can hear the commotion. And, um... Inosuke, of course, follows him. Inosuke is being flashy because, let's just be honest, Tengen is more likely his idol. Actually, uh, Tengen's sound abilities, you know, that's the branch. Is that the branch? I believe that's the branch that um, Inosuke's beast form branches off from. So, um, Tanjiro is super surprised about her hit coming off, and Tengen tells him, the battle isn't over. You need to control your sister. Brats who are cranky, who start acting cranky, do not belong in the middle of the battle. And I can't tell if Nesco pushed them out or... It, I don't think he pushed them. I think Nesco kind of kicked and pushed them off of the balcony onto the ground. And he even told he like he even told him before they fell out the back, sing her a lullaby or something. You know, be unflashy and sing her a lullaby, right? And she's still not listening to him. He's trying to, you know, get her under control. She headbutts him in the back. Ow, that shit hurt herself. She headbutts him. And you can see his nose getting, you know, getting bruised up. And, you know, he's thinking back to his, to their mother. And then he remembers Uzi, uh, Tengen's words he literally just said. Sing her a lullaby or something. So he starts singing the lullaby that their mother had sang to her. Remember, Tanjiro is the oldest child. So, this lullaby about, you know, asking the rabbit, why does the rabbit have red eyes? And it was born that way because his mother ate berries. That's It's a it's a thing that's very Japanese. But, uh, Tanjiro cannot sing. He did his, but he was just saying it over and over. And he even overlays his hand over his sister trying to get her in control. And um, this whole moment, her berserker rage is much like Broly. She had no pupils. But her pupils have come back. Those pink slit pupils that come back. And she's thinking back to the lullaby. She can actually hear her mother singing it. And remembers the time of uh, the... I think the third oldest was was uh, the next the next little brother. And she's walking with, with uh, Nesco and a little baby on her back. And cute little Nesco goes so, you know... Mommy, is that why Big Brother's eyes are red? Because when he was in your tummy, you were eating red berries. And the mother kind of looks at her and just smiles and laughs. Like, this is a very cute. This is, I like seeing flashbacks of these guys. Don't make me care about those, these damn demons. A lot of these demons are just straight assholes. So I like seeing stuff like this for, for our, our main girl and our main boy. Actually, I want to see something for, um, pardon me here. I want to see something for our guy, uh, 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 Inosuke. I need to know more about him because he is an enigma wrapped up in a big dumb suit. I was going to say something else, but I, I'm not going to be offensive on here. <clears throat> so, we're back in, you know, real time and she's super, she's crying. She is literally sobbing her eyes out and... She's, you know, slowly shrinking down to little tiny miniature Nesco form. And she falls straight asleep right there on her brother's lap. And he's like, wow. But to Tanjiro's looking up, he's like, the battle still isn't over. There's nothing going on. And Daki's whining. Like, she's whining with her head in her in her lap. Telling Tengen, you know, she's contending. She's like, I am an upper demon. I have the six MIs and everything. He And... This is a very comedic but tense moment because it's it's very funny. He has a funny face. He's like, yeah, but your head is in your hands, you dumbass. And I say dumbass because he called her Baka. The other translation, nah, I'm, I'm going to give you that raw translation. He calls her Baka. He calls her dumbass. Meanwhile, there's still a couple that's in the corner. And, you know, she, again, she brings out, she has an eye. He's like, he's not buying that she's the upper ring demon. And... She starts to cry. Here's, here's, now here's, here's where things start getting weird. The moment she starts to cry, he starts to look perturbed. He's like, wait a minute. I've cut off her head. Her body hasn't started disintegrating. 
and she's crying and throwing a tantrum. He's like, something is not going on, going right here. And so she's literally saying, oh, if you can just die, die, die. And she says, oh, Lee Chan, help me. Her shadow starts to morph and congeal. And out of her back, this bony thing comes out. Tengen is probably one of the most, he has to be right up there with uh, Kyojo Rengoku, as in speed. Because as fast as this thing comes out, he was swinging both of his blades. Didn't get them because they tell they teleported to what was left of the balcony, and um, this is and you know Tengen's thinking is that he's like man this this guy's reflexes are pretty damn fast as well, um, and he's like this this big brother character with this nasty bony back and lanky arms. He kind of reminds me of Faust from Guilty Gear, but. You can see his ugliness, his ugly face and everything. He's touching sister face. He even says you have, with the little brains you have left, you haven't even put your head back on your shoulders. Here, let me heal the burns from your face. He's actively healing her as well because she cannot heal herself. Hmm. Now, uh, the moment all this is going on, Tengen moves again. But this time we see a slash on his on his forehead protector, and the other the, this new demon is standing up straight with these two sickles in his hand. We say, "Oh man, you got some pretty good reflexes on you, dude. I was going for the kill, and you were able to stop me." And Tengen is bleeding. He is bleeding from the left side of his face. I'm looking at the anime, it's on the side. Yeah, he's bleeding from the left side of his face. And this character speaking sluggishly, he's one of those characters that's like, you know, uh, he reminds me, I'm ashamed of myself because I cannot remember the name of the guy from My Hero Academia, Boku no Hero, the guy who scratches his neck and has the hands on his face and he's actually the main villain. I feel bad for not remembering his name, but he speaks almost like him, but even slower. And we see something, we see symbols in his eyes, and it does get confirmed later. I'm just going to spoil it now. He he has upper six in his pupils. But I'm thinking to myself, is this a two-in-one demon situation? He compliments Tengen. He tells him, yeah, man, you're pretty handsome. You got some meat on your bones. You're tall as hell. You got muscles. I envy you. Now, he is... Just like the other guy was correct. The one I mentioned before, this dude is digging into his own skin. He's tearing up his body with all this envy that he has. And he has these blood bone sipes in his hand, sickles in his hand. And he's like, would you mind dropping dead? But not just dropping dead. I'm going to make sure you die in the worst way possible. I'm going to make sure you're skinned alive and you're disemboweled and that you're cut. And then Donkey, like the little brat bitch she is, tells him about that. She's like, yeah, make sure you get everybody that hurt me. They all ganged up on me and they bullied me even though I was doing my best. And I'm thinking to myself, this, you really think you're the good guys here? Like, this is, this, this is a, a remember that, that the Nazi kid? Hans, are we the bad guys? You guys are the bad guys. And he's like, you know what, for you guys bullying my little sister, I'm going to kill everyone that's here that bullied her. And when I spin around, you're going to die because my name is Gyotaro. And that's when we get the, we see the upper six in his eyes. And when he spun, he threw these sickles and we don't see what's going on inside. We see from Tanjiro's uh, point of view, two blood sickles came out and then went right back inside of there. And he's wondering what the hell is going on. But backup arrives in time. And Nosuke, who calls himself Flashy, God of the Mountain, I'm man. He picked he couldn't pick a better time to find a teacher. Unfortunately, didn't yeah, Tanjiro also found a what could have been a teacher in Rengoku. Mm. Mm. Man, I hope this does not become a pattern. Anyway. They're going to back, he asked them to back up Tengen because he needs to get Nesco back in the Nesco box so she can sleep. And they're like, yeah, we got this. We'll do this. Tengen 
has saved both of the both the both the couple are directly behind him. He's now bleeding on both sides of his face. And he has blades up and the demon's like, Wow, he's he's pissed. He's like, Wow, you actually saved those two and defended yourself. It's like I bet you're you're seen as this uh, uh, big savior in their eyes that's gonna save their lives and make everything better. It's just, it's you're gonna be so adored, adored by them. It's pissing this super envious demon off. See, first we have the prideful uh, bitch one, and now we have the annoying bastard, uh, uh, envious one, right? It's starting to look like Homunculus from, uh, from, uh, Oh Lord, Full Metal Alchemist. Don't make fun of me for forgetting that. There's too many animes out there. Anywho, so he's saying Tengen. Tengen just, I love, I love that the Hush, the Hushiras, they will banter back with these guys, except for uh, Giyu. Giyu ain't got time for that shit. But Tengen's like, yeah, of course they're gonna, you know, of course they're gonna fawn over me. I am a flashy ladies' man. It's a no-brainer. I even have three wives. The moment he says that this dude goes, you have three wives? This And this is what, this sends him over the edge. Because he's like, I can't even gain any weight. So he does his blood, demon blood art, flying blood sickles. And the blood is just pooling from wherever his hand touched these things. And does multiple slashes. And they're they're almost like crescent waves. They're not crescent waves, but they're sickle waves. And in Tengen's head, like I said, I love this moment. He's thinking, so the slashes of blood like thin sickles that are being flung at me, and I can't protect them and deal with these because there's way too many of these to handle. So what did you think? Did you think the boys were gonna jump in? No. He throws flash bombs. In that moment, he throws three flash bombs on the ground. To break the floor beneath them and get him on a lower level. And do and the demon's just like, oh, well, okay then. Anselin tells them, you all need to run and hide. Yeah, they're going to run and hide. This dude can control the blood like a bloodbender. But, you know, not annoying and, you know, limited to the moon. Excuse me. And I'm not counting core. So shut up. And uh, he's making the blood bend and Tengen is blocking and attacking he's like okay so he can make it move independent from the sickles and it's not going to stop until it explodes and he still has time to think why didn't the sister die when he cut his head off does he have to kill the brother in order to kill them both is the brother the main unit he's like he might be he's like but you know what and there's nothing to it but to do it literally he basically says ain't nothing to it but to do it so he throws three more of these flash bangs and with his super with his super hearing he's like i can hear most of the people on upper level are gone he's able to slash point blank on one of these marble sized flash bangs and make a huge explosion on the upper level and then we see a stupid ball of wrapped up cloth Ugh. and he says okay I can tell this is not going to be a walk in the park. And Gyotaro reveals that they are a two people in one. Because his little his, his sister Daki is on his back and her cloths are unraveling. And that's where the episode ends. So let's let's go to Nin Nin. Let's go to our, our Taisho secret. They're starting. Tanjiro instantly starts off. He's like, we're going to instantly start off with a Taisho secret. Because we didn't get one last week, right? And it's about Nesco. Uh, ever since Nesco was born, she was... Just an absolute angel. She's never been unreasonable throughout her life either. Even when their grandmother and father passed away, she told their siblings that since neither our grandmother nor our father can they can they can't rest easily if we're, you know, still crying, let's cry our eyes out all day today and then after that we're gonna be strong for them. And in that moment when she was saying it to all the siblings Oops, uh, Big Brother Tanjiro, Big Brother Tanjiro and Mom were kind of peeking in, and Tanjiro was kind of crying with how very mature, I just, I love this dynamic, like he, Tanjiro is literally, you know, the first, 
firstborn, strong son, does whatever the family needs to be done, took care of his family. Dad dies cool. He steps up and he does he's done everything. <sighs> Man. Next episode is going to be called Gathering. And he says Nesco really is the best. Yes, Tom Jero. Nesco is best girl. She is best little sister. You know, it's, for, it's first her, then it's Aisha, Norn, you're not even on the list. Yeah, I'm still talking about Mushiko Tensei. Um, did I say last episode was the best episode? It, it's, you know, I'm going to be honest. In terms of, in terms of action, 100% last episode was, was the best episode of, of the entertainment arc. But I, I got, I can't lie. This was pretty damn great. I love seeing how crazy Nesco got. And at the same time, that is the that is the thing about these two that even the next the, the next little brother said you two are very gentle but when you get mad you get super scary do not lose yourself and they both have to work at this i really want to see nesco be able to i don't know train or maybe they need to visit lady tamayo so she can give her something that can supplement the whole Instead of Nesco needing to sleep for a month and then be able to fight and then sleep a month again, she needs to get something that can sustain her so she can fight because th they're going against a brother-sister demon combo. This would be the best fight for them. They went against a, 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 a triplet demon brother thing combo before. This would have been perfect for these two. <sighs> so, I have no clue where this is going. I sincerely hope Tengen does not die. Like I said, I may have been spoiled on certain things, but I, I refuse to look up the details since I'm watching the anime. It's not like when I it's not like me reading One Piece, which I need to catch up on. I when I when I got to a certain part in the anime One Piece, I just went ahead and read just started reading the rest. And you know what? I might start doing manga reviews because let's just be honest, you can't watch everything. Or you could if you're that kind of person, but you can't watch everything. Um, but back on track, straight up, guys. Great episode. Very good characterization from Nesco. Very amazing show of feet. I mean, a uh, uh, show of strength. Showing feats of strength, if you will. Huh, feats, get it? Because she kicks. Yeah, yeah. I look forward to. I at least want. I know they don't do filler, but I at least just want one episode just seeing. You know, seeing Nesco at night, learning how to gain control of her abilities. Because she, if she's this naturally strong, damn, that Kamado family is amazing. Let me know what you thought of the episode in the comment section down below. If you made it this far, um, if you made it this far, I want you to say Nesco is Besco. And Besco is B-E-S-C-O. Besco. Nesco is Besco. As always, guys, thank you for having me. Please remember to give me a like. I'll ask you for that comment, so don't forget to subscribe. But if you aren't new here, hit the notification bell. That's also right there, so you can be notified of more videos like this whenever they come up. Share the video so others can see what a great time we're having because I am loving it. ba da ba 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 I am loving it. As always, thank you for spending some time out to spend some time with me. Please, be good, be blessed. Wash your hands, wear a mask. It's... It's crazy out there, but you can still protect yourself and protect others. So, be good to yourself. Be good to others. Either way it goes, don't be a jerk. You are never alone, and I will definitely see you next time.